Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time. Either way, I'm super happy you're here. We got a lot going on today. We got some dip. We got some reverse stamping. So let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is wipe my nails off with alcohol just to make sure they're nice and clean for the peel base application. Uh, make sure there's no oils on them or anything like that. And then we will do the peel base. Uh, um, obviously, I kind of like zoom through this because um, I don't just put a strip down the center of my nail. That's just all I'm leaving in the video so that it doesn't take up more time than we need. But I do coat the entire nail with peel base and these are on a buffed surface. So instead of shiny surface, it's a buffed surface. And that way it gives me an extra couple days for my peel base. I did wear these nails for a few days, so I didn't want them to pop off right away. And that is the best way I have found to use peel base unless I want it to pop off right away. Um, then a buffed surface versus a shiny surface is the way to go. And I mentioned in my last video, but in case you did not, in case, oh my, we're starting off great this morning. You didn't see that video. Um, I do blow dry my peel base dry. Um, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds versus waiting the three to seven minutes, depending on how warm my nail room is. So I am using the Azure Beauty Low Odor Liquids again. I am in love with these and they're probably going to be my new go-tos. They are going to be my new go-tos. Um, I still have to figure out the top coat. So I did not use the top coat in this video, but I was looking um, on Amazon on some of the reviews about the top coat and then I saw a page that had instructions. So the instructions that came with it were not very clear. Um, but the instructions that I saw said one coat for shiny and two for matte. It's like a surprise. So maybe that is why they turned so matte, which I was like, I've never, you know, like they were so shiny, like right after when I took pictures and then all of a sudden they were very, very matte. So I'm going to try that next time. But in this video, I do use gel and that's because I'm doing stamping. We will talk about that more later. Um, so right now I'm just going to talk about what I'm doing. So I am using this nude. It is uh, barely there, I think is what it's called from All Powdered Up. It is by far my favorite nude. Um, and I did two full nails in that and now I'm doing a color block. So I'm just kind of outlining my color block with the odorless liquids and a disposable nail art brush um, because the brush is going to get ruined from that, from the dip base. Like even though it takes a while to dry it eventually will dry and it, it it's gonna destroy the brush so i use these disposable brushes that i got off amazon or timu i'm not 100 percent sure and they work great because there's like a hundred or something of them and i can just toss them in the garbage um i also use these sometimes for reverse stamping um you can also use them for gel and then you wouldn't have to throw them away but yeah, so this is what I use them for. And this nail is going to be a color block. So that is why. And the first coat looks kind of rough. And that's because I went in with the nail art brush and it didn't, it just doesn't put a perfect application on. But the second layer, after I do the first layer of the green, when I go in to do the second layer of the nude in the green, it will look much better because I'll use the brush. I just need kind of like the base outline and I didn't want to use tape because I have peel base on, but also I didn't want stark lines. I wanted it to be a little bit, um, uh, curved. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So now I'm getting into the first layer of the green, which is called about last night and it's from Rossi and i love this green it is so pretty it's like so natural looking like i don't know that didn't make sense but like it looks like um man i am having trouble with my words today it's just i don't know it's a very earthy green that that sounds about right the way i'm trying to describe it and i just think it was really pretty for this and then for the reverse stamping i have the perfect green nail polish that i feel like matches this color so well. So that is one of the reasons I wanted to use this green in particular is because then I could match a nail polish green to do the reverse stamping. 
So I'm doing one full layer on the, these two nails, the pinky and the middle, and then I will do the color block on the thumb. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull out the palette. I'm gonna put a little bit of the base coat down and I do wipe this up right away once I'm done. I do not le let it sit on my palette because it will dry hard eventually and then it'll be hard to get off and I don't wanna ruin my palette. So I'm just going down in this lower corner and I'm doing that one first and then I will pour over. I was a little worried about it staining the nude, but it really didn't. Um, it looked like it did until I went in to dust off and then it was fine. The nude was totally fine. And then I'm going to outline this top corner and you see what I mean? I kind of wanted it to be a little bit like, um, I don't know what other word to use besides curve to just dis to describe this, but I just didn't want like a stark line. I wanted it to kind of have some shape to it. So I'm going to pour that over. And then we will get in to our second layer here in a second. I did notice I missed a little bit on the bottom. So I'm just kind of going back over that and filling that in because I don't want any patchy spots. Um, even though I am going to go over it with the brush on the second layer, which was really hard for that bottom corner, but I did it. Okay. Second layer. Um, yeah, we're doing the same thing over again. So I'm going to let you guys watch. I'm going to take a quick short break and then I will be back after that. I'm back. Um, I just, you know, I like talking through the entire videos, but when they're 30 minutes long, it gets a little bit exhausting. And I sometimes just, I'm like out of things to talk about. But I did want to mention that on this nail, if you noticed, which if you were paying attention, you may have, if you weren't, then you probably didn't. But I did when I put, did the nude on and I put the base coat on for the nude, 
I didn't go all, I didn't butt it all the way up to the green. And that's because once like I got both layers on and I saw what we were looking like, I knew that I just wanted a little bit more green. So that is why I didn't go all the way up to the green. I left a little bit, a little bit of a space on each side and that way I could fill that in with the green and the green would take up a little bit more room than originally planned. Um, sometimes that happens, like I go in with an idea, I do it, and then I see it once I have the first layer on and I'm like, oh, I need a little bit more of this color or this color or whatever it may be. So that was a really easy way since the green is the darker color, it was really easy to, to fix that, um, to the way that I liked it. So like I said, it was really hard to get that brush in there without getting it on my skin. I did get a little bit, but just clean it right up. No worries there. And then after this, I will clear cap off camera. Um, so there we are, we're all clear capped and we're gonna activate. I do not have the Azure Beauty activator yet. I will probably get it um, when I'm out of this and my other activator because activator's activator. This seems to work just fine with the Azure Beauty. It hardens it just fine quickly, like within, I'd say, a minute to two max my nails are really hard and ready to file so i'm just going to use what i have first and then um i will likely go back and order some activator i'm going to see if i can order the activator alone the weird thing is the odorless pack or the low odor pack on amazon comes in a two pack just the base and the top coat which to me makes no sense why is the activator not in there you can get a four pack that comes with the base top and activator and a brush saver, which is fine, but I wish it was more of an option because I don't want, I don't need a brush saver every single time. Like one is more than enough. Um, I am checking my nails. I get the clicky sound. Hopefully you guys could hear that. Um, and that tells me I'm safe to file. You really want to hear that clicky sound and then i've already filed and buffed off camera and i'm going in with some alcohol and the stiff brush to just clean up any leftover residue from filing and now we're going to get into the fun part so i'm going to use this fun stamp it has leaves and flowers and then the other stamp that i'm going to use on my thumb has just leaves this is the color and i just it's perfect and then i'm going to go in with this these there's actually two of them but I only showed one and I already clearly had a little bit of a mishap I went to um, do my first stamp and I am reverse stamping so none of these stamps are gonna get put on my nails right away um, but this one is for my thumb and I really want to clean I don't want it to take cover the whole nail I mostly only want it to cover the nude so I have to go around and kind of clean up some of it and decide what I want to keep on the nail and what I want to take off and when I did that the first time, I accidentally took off too much. So I'm going in and this is just, I tore off a little piece of my lint roller and I'm just using this to clean off the excess. You can also use scotch tape, uh, any kind of tape will work really. Um, so most of the time I just use my lint roller, but I really needed to kind of get in there and tuck in there. And now I'm just kind of, I'm not gonna stamp. <laughs> I'm just looking, putting this over the nail where I want it and making sure that it works. So now I'm gonna go in with the second one and uh, this is going to be a full stamp. So all I have to do is clean off the excess around the edges and I'm good to go. And then I will do the third one and then we'll get into the fun part, which is the reverse stamping. Um, I am gonna quickly finish up what I was saying. I wish they would sell base top and activator together or at least give options like if you just want the two great if you want the three great and if you want the four great hopefully they will change that in the future but until then i'm just going to use the activator that i have okay done talking about that let's wrap that up <laughs> if you've been around my channel for a while you know how much i love reverse stamping it just kind of it just is nail i mean like stamping's great i love stamping in general but like when you reverse stamp it's just i don't know it it does something to the mani and I love it so much. Now I've learned uh, that it really is very important to choose your colors by wisely. And this, like I said, this match is so perfect. Um, and it's also, I don't know, sometimes when you put too much, too many different colors, it kind of takes away. Um, so like on this one, 
it's just the leaves so I'm just going in with this green and I'm going to do the leaves but on the other ones like at first I was like oh do I want to put like some blue flowers some purple flowers some pink like make it all different and then I was like no let's tone it back um, sometimes less is more sometimes more is more it just kind of depends on the look you're going for and I really wanted just this really pretty natural earthy leaf and like subtle flower mani and that is why I only used the two pinks now they are kind of shifty so like I don't know if you can tell in the video I could really tell when I was outside taking um or looking at it that they shift to like this blue purple color sometimes in the light but they are really cool they're I'm not going to be able to link them I've tried before um because I got them from born pretty eons ago long long time ago um, and I cannot find them anymore, but Born Pretty does have some similar ones. So I'll try to see if I can find those and link those. Um, they're not the same, but they're pretty similar. So, um, I don't know. This is making me really excited to get into Halloween stamping, which I'm going to eventually, but for the goodness sakes, we literally just jumped into fall manis and I see, and it's fine. It's just not for me. I see ha Halloween manis everywhere right now. And I'm like, wait, stop, pause. Go back to fall for five minutes. Let's just fall for five minutes and then we'll get into Halloween manis. I am not a ginormous Halloween fan. In fact, I'm really not at all. Um, my daughter's crazy about Halloween and I know a lot of people are. It's just not my... Um, it's not my season. It's not my holiday. I, I don't really care for it, but I do love doing Halloween manis, spooky manis, fun, spooky, like, like it doesn't have to be like grim and gross. And, but I do not mind that either. Um, I like all of them, especially anything to do with spiders and spider webs is a hundred percent my jam. I love spiders. I love doing spider manis. My fiance absolutely hates them and can't stand it when it's, he cannot stand it when I do them because he's not a fan of spiders. I'm like, they're fake. They're on my nails. <laughs> he really just does not like them, but I love them. So I am all for the spooky Halloween manis. I just want five whole minutes of fall. That's all. Just five. Um, and of course I'm being sarcastic right now. I want more than five minutes. I want like, let's just do September. Can we just dedicate September to fall? And then we'll do Halloween. And then we're going to jump right into winter. And for me, winter is like nine months long. And I don't think I'm over exaggerating, even though everybody says I am that I live with. It literally is snow on the ground, cold weather from October to June. I think that's yeah, if I'm doing my math correctly, that is absolutely nine months and that is a long time to suffer through winter. So yeah, I just want one month of fall, one month of Halloween manis, and then I don't want nine months of winter, but that's what's going to happen. And by the time winter is over, I'm just craving all the other seasons. So anyway, let's get back into this. So I'm doing the pink flowers. I meant to um, only show you me color or reverse stamping one of the stamps, but I think I accidentally got the other stamp in here too, because I still have another color to get into. Um, or maybe I, yeah, I think I did. It's fine. Either way I go in and when I pull out the wooden stick, it's just to clean up any of the excess that kind of like went out of the lines basically. I think this is the one that kind of shifts to blue and purple in the light because you could see it like right there when I was pulling it out. You could see inside the nail polish bottle that it had like a shifty blue in it. So it is really pretty. Um, I think that these were the right colors to use because they are just very subtle versus like a like cream colored purple or cream colored pink or cream colored um, blue. These just kind of I don't know. They worked. I, I'm really glad that I picked these. I think they worked really well. I've definitely had a lot of mishaps in the past with reverse stamping of not picking the best color combos or having just too much going on and it takes away. So we've got our reverse stamping done. We've set the stamps aside and we're going to clean off this palette with some alcohol or sorry, some acetone 
just to kind of get all that polish off. And now we are gonna go in and I'm gonna base coat all the nails. And I'm doing that for two reasons. One, I'm gonna use it as my sticky base, which I kind of regret that. It did not work as good as I remember in the past. Um, it just, it, it, we'll talk about that here in a minute. But I'm also gonna top coat with gel. So I want a base coat on all the nails. So I figured, okay, while we're letting those dry, let's just go in and let's get our base coat on. I do let the reverse stamps dry for a minimum of 10 minutes. I've done five minutes before and they smudge and they smear and sometimes they don't transfer very well. 10 minutes kind of for me is that perfect amount of time to wait. Um, sometimes I end up waiting more. It just depends. I might have waited a little bit more on this one and that's only because I do have to go in and put on the liquid latex around the two fingers that are going to have the full stamps on them and that took me a, a few minutes to do so um and i also kind of wish i would have waited to put the base coat on until after i put the liquid latex on but again like it's it worked out fine it's not a big deal um and i also need to learn to put the latex liquid latex in my cuticles because man that black stamping polish is so hard it took me forever to get it out of my cuticle area um i went in well you'll see it's i left most of it in the video not all of it but i left the majority of it in the video so that you guys could see how i clean up but gosh it was it was rough so we're getting the liquid latex on um i love this stuff probably mostly because it's purple but it also goes on it's not like as gross and tacky where it like gunks up on the brush as some other ones that I've used. It does gunk up a little bit. I'm not going to say it doesn't. It does, but not, not really badly. And it dries super fast and it doesn't, I don't know, doesn't irritate me in any way. Some of them smell really bad. Sorry, I cut myself off right in the middle of talking because at the last minute I decided to take out doing the liquid latex on the other nail just because you don't need to see me apply it twice. It's just slow and boring and yeah. So I took that out and I was trying to say some of them that I've smelled smell really bad. Okay, so we're doing this first stamp and I noticed right away that it was not laying down as best as good as I wanted. In fact, I missed a whole leaf. I am able to just go in and put that down, um, but I definitely had to like put the stamper on and wiggle it around and like kind of hold it like so yeah I've, in the past I've always used either like a sticky base or um, a foil glue or I've also used the Young Nails Protein Bond because it's really sticky. Um, I should have done something like that. So this is just a black liner gel that I'm just outlining that bottom part with. Um, and then I cured that for 60 seconds or 30 seconds. I can't remember. Um, and now I'm going in with the full cover stamp. And again, you can see I like have to like hold it down, kind of wiggle it around. I don't want to lose anything. And then I do have to like kind of pat down the overhang. And then I will clip that off here in a minute. And then doing the same thing on this one. This should have been like lay down, pull up, done. Um, and it was fine. It did work out fine. It really did. It just... I, there's better options so I would not I don't know I probably won't use base coat again and I don't um, recommend it but in a pinch it would work over nothing so um, it does work it just it takes a little more finagling my dogs are getting very antsy it's way past the time of taking them out to go potty so I need to wrap this up really quickly um, anyway so I'm clipping off and then after I clip off, I will, I only showed the one nail, but I did have to clip off on both. We will go in and we will get this liquid latex off our nails, which comes off really easy, but you can see there is a lot of black in the cuticle area. So I'm going to need to uh, get that out of there. And I'm going to leave one nail in showing you how I do that. But yeah, especially that nail. Ugh, there's like a whole blob. Um, like I said, probably should have put the liquid latex in my cuticle areas. This is going to take a minute. I'm going to let you guys watch. It's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing. I'm just kind of going, well, first I'm going around with this and then I will take some acetone and I will clean up. So I'm going to let you guys watch and I'll be right back.
Okay, so we've got both nails cleaned up finally, um, and we're getting into the top coat. So the things that I use to clean them up, they're like these, I don't even, they're like micro swab things. Um, I like them because they're so tiny, they're really easy to get in and clean up without like ruining your design that you just worked so hard on. So yeah, I'll link those. I got me, they're off Amazon or Timu, I can't remember, but I will link them. And then as far as top coating, I'm a little bit nervous to do the stamping nails. So I am starting off with just the solid nails. I'll give those a quick flash cure or no, I think I just, no, I think I cured them for the whole entire time. Either way, 60 seconds or a flash cure, whatever is up your alley, it doesn't really matter. And then I go in and I do the thumb first because it's the first one I stamped. And it was kind of like a test, like if this one doesn't smudge, then the others hopefully won't too. So um, that is why I used gel top coat and not dip top coat. So you can use dip top coat over your stamping, but you have to do a smudge free top coat first or well, really a smudge free. I guess you could do a gel top coat and then dip over dip top coat over it. But why would you do that? Because gel is so shiny. But if you don't want to use gel or you can't use gel, a smudge free top coat. Maniology has a great one. I don't have any right now, but they do have a great one. And then once that dries, give it like five, 10 minutes, then you can go in with your activator and dip top coat. Um, because I don't have a smudge free top coat, that's not really an option for me right now. So when I do stamping, I will likely pretty much always use a gel top coat. And as long as you're not like as long as you're like floating it over and you're not like really touching the brush to the stamped nail, you should not get any smudging as long as you've waited long enough, um, which I've definitely waited long enough. I had a long cleanup process that took me probably 20 flipping minutes. So boom, we are done. We've got gel top coated. We've got our stamps. I love them. I think they turned out so pretty. I like the nude base underneath. I think they look really good. And now we're going in with, oh, you guys all know, my favorite cuticle oil, aka Crypt Serum from Nails in a Coffin. This is Mountain Rain. I know you couldn't see it. I think it's called Mountain Rain. Oh, I hope so. Anyway, I know you couldn't see it because the label is a little bit uh, oily, <laughs> so it kind of distorted the label. Um, her new labels don't do that, so I'm really glad about that, but this is, it was just the... I mean, I was going for like more of an earthy tone Manny, so I kind of wanted to use my earthy cuticle oil. So Coffin 20 will save. I highly suggest her Crip Serums cuticle oils. They are linked. Um, yeah, grab some of those. So we are done. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this reverse stamping video. I sure know that I did. I hope you guys will join me in the next one. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.